and welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books i'm dressed like bloody neil buchanan here i've got an oversized green this green is very 90s isn't it when i was in when i was in the 90s um i remember going to a school disco and having a green shirt literally this exact color but it was in like that really sweaty material that all clothes from the 90s were made from and i remember wearing it with a black long skirt at school disco and thinking i was the bomb well anyway bought this second hand now i feel like neil buchanan i'm having a lovely time today's video it's not a neil buchanan video by the way neil buchanan is the guy from art attack <laughs> who he was and if you're in the US and you don't know what Art Attack is in the 90s there was a TV show called Art Attack and it had a guy called Neil Buchanan who used to host it and it would just be him going around doing different pieces of art be it in the studio with this very unusual sort of clay head man who I didn't like very much at all to doing big art attacks where he'd go out and make like in a field and make a piece of art of a toilet made out of toilet rolls from above great show great show um today's video is all about the books that i read in the month of june i read seven books in the month of june which while still being wonderful is a, i would say about half of what i normally read now one of the reasons i can think this has happened is because i listened to instead of listening to like i've only listened to one audiobook this month um I listened to all of the Jane Austen plays, um, all of the Jane Austen books uh, via radio play. So a lot of my listening was done um, when I was listening to radio plays, which don't count as audio books. Um, and yeah, also I read a classic this month. I read Persuasion um, and I think they take me a little bit longer than normal. So yeah, seven books this month. I'll just go over the stats as I do at the beginning of each month. So this month I read seven books. Um, I owned four of those books, which was 57% of my reading this month. I listened to one audio book, which was 14% of my reading this month. And I read two uh, library books, which was 28% of my reading this month. So overall in the grand scheme of things, I've now read 67 books this year. Um, one of which I've borrowed Road, that's one percent of my reading uh six of which have been proofs uh, proof copies or advanced reader copies that's nine percent of my reading uh 18 of which have been from the library which is 27 percent of my reading and um 21 i have owned and i've also listened to 21 audiobooks which is both 31 percent of my reading so yeah we're getting there um Please, I'm actually reading stuff off my shelf, so 21 books. Please, I'm reading my library. I wanted to use my library this year. That was one of my um, resolutions. Please, with everything, really. So let's get on with the reading, shall we? So uh, you will notice in this reading wrap-up, as I was reading a lot of Jane Austen books, um, I dubbed this month June Austen and ended up... Oh, actually, I can tell you the actual breakdown of what I ended up doing. So I ended up doing something to do with every single one of her books. Um, so I did like a sort of... The, the six big hitters basically so I listened to a radio play of all of them um, and then I read a retelling of Northanger Abbey I also watched the film of Sense and Sensibility Pride and Prejudice is the one I did the most of I read a retelling I listened to a retelling I'm halfway through that I haven't finished that yet I probably will wrap that up here as well well I'll mention it now it's one of my favorite books from last year it's the other Bennett sister um I'm I've still got like 10 hours of it left but really much very much enjoying it I watched um a Pride and Prejudice film what Pride and Prejudice film did I watch oh Fire Island yeah that was good that was a queer retelling of um, Pride and Prejudice and listen to the radio play then I watched two Emma films I watched uh, Clueless and I watched uh, Emma from 2020 which is amazing listen to the radio play and then Persuasion I read the actual book of Persuasion I watched the Sally Hawkins film of Persuasion listen to the radio play and also read a retelling which was Edge of Reason by Bridget Jones but we'll get by Bridget Jones Bridget Jones Edge of Reason but we'll get let, let's work through it sort of chronologically so god four minutes in I haven't mentioned one fucking book yet so the first book I read of the month was Pride, Prejudice and Other Flavours by Sonali Dev. I did not enjoy this at all. I gave it 1.5 stars. This was just, there was just so much going on here. This is a um, gender swapped retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Fine, that sounds great. But if you're gender swapping the retelling, don't call the Elizabeth Bennet character Darcy. Because that gets fucking well confusing. So in this he's called DJ, DJ Kane. And his name is Darcy. He's referred to as Darcy a few times throughout the book. Even though he's the Elizabeth uh, Bennett character. His sister is called Emma. Now, since reading this, I've realised that there's a whole host of books and I wonder if his sister being named Emma in this, she is the one who will feature in the Emma book of this. But yeah, it was just very sort of vast. There was too many Austin references. I always, DJ and Emma are um, British and whenever I read British characters written from an American perspective, I always find them 
completely lol like this whole thing was sort of like keep your knickers on stop being such a knobhead love calling everyone love which is <laughs> like people just don't do that people don't say keep your knickers on literally every single sentence people don't call everyone knobheads um yeah it just felt very unusual there was too much like ag between the can you hear mini meowing there was too much ag between the darcy and elizabeth bennett character so um she was called Ra dr trisha rajay she's the darcy character and then dj kane he is the elizabeth bennett character they fucking hated each other the whole way through which i know it's like the pride and prejudice vibe but it was like nasty and malicious and like horrible and i i Every time I picked this up, I thought, oh God, I don't want to read these interactions between these two people because I just found it very not nice. Um, yeah, too much plot. Also, like, it, when I read the back of it and I was like, oh, great news. DJ Kane's a, a, um, a chef. There's going to be loads of stuff in here about cooking and all of that. That barely featured. But when it did, it was really sort of like bizarre references to food, which led me to believe that the person who wrote this had never eaten food <laughs> and like, or never cooked anything. There's a whole massive, really in-depth pit where um, DJ is having a, um, a conversation with his friend um, and he's washing dirt off of tomatoes Tomatoes, which famously don't grow in dirt, <laughs> they grow on a thing and you literally can pick them off and eat them from the vine. And there's a really bit like getting really in the dips and really trying to scrub all of the dirt off of these tomatoes. And I was just like, that's it. everything about it annoyed me. I really didn't get on with it at all. So not not enjoyed uh, the next one was the murder of mr wickham by claudia gray i listened to this on audio so this isn't a retelling as such but it's jane austen inspired it is set at a house party at emma and mr knightley's house by the way this house party is going on for a month and it has all the different characters from sort of like the jane austen multiverse appearing so when i started listening to this at the beginning of the month because i finished it on the 10th of june there was a lot of characters i weren't familiar with i hadn't i hadn't i didn't know anything about mansfield park i didn't know anything about northanger abbey i didn't know anything about persuasion at the beginning of the month so as i was getting to know these characters listening to the radio plays reading other things watching the films i was getting to know them a little bit more um i got and and, and that made me get into it a little bit more so there's really no love for Mr. Wickham lost here. He is completely fucking hated. And halfway through the book, he sort of turns up and gets murdered. And it's a, and then from then on, it's a who done it of that. You've got a few extra characters in here of people who didn't exist in the book. So like children of people. So Elizabeth and Darcy's son um, and uh, a few others. But yeah, it was fine. Um, I wonder if it's a bit sort of niche. But I think if you're a Jane Austen super fan, then you'd probably get quite a lot from this. But I enjoyed it and thought it was reasonably fun. I gave it two and a half stars. Um, next up was a retelling of Northanger Abbey. I got this out from the library. Um, I didn't really enjoy this very much. I, I will be honest, like all of the retellings that I've read of Jane Austen books this month, like it hasn't been a very good month of reading for me. Everything scored very lowly. The books that scored higher were ones that I'd... Yeah, I'm looking. Every single book, well, apart from Bridget Jones, but yeah, everything scored quite quite low. This one in particular, I didn't really enjoy. I gave it two stars. I felt like this was very, very dated culturally. It's also difficult. No, I don't know if it is difficult, but like I went into this not knowing anything about Northanger Abbey. And um, I came out not really knowing anything about Northanger Abbey. I also listened to the radio play of it. So like I was able to apply different scenes of it. But in this book, um, you're following a group of teenagers at Edinburgh Festival and then them going back to Northanger Abbey. And like, I feel like it lost a bit of the gothicness, particularly as the house was sort of continually um, described as being a um, sort of like Scandinavian decorated house. It looked like an abbey from outside, but inside it was all very sort of sharp lines and um, wood and um, sort of minimalist and things like that. This is very, very dated, this book, culturally. And I mean it in sort of like... It, I think it was written at the time when Facebook was the only social media thing that existed. And Facebook is referenced, I, I shit you not, probably every other page. Facebook, writing on Facebook, status on Facebook, I saw on Facebook you were here, um, the photos being put on Facebook, oh I've just seen this on Facebook, like constantly, constantly, constantly. And it, it, I do, and I'm comparing this to Bridget Jones' Edge of Reason, which I read later on in the month, um, and is also dated, but not in this sort of like, it, it, in this way, it, it, in the same way. It's very difficult for me to explain this. How am I trying to explain it? But yeah, it dated very badly, and it was set. It wasn't like 
the Bridget Jones books, I guess, are reflective for me of the 90s as a period, the late 90s, early 2000s, New Labour, um, all sorts of other stuff going on. But this was like just a very sort of like Facebook heavy group book. Um, it was also because the, uh, the the character we're following the lead of, and I can't remember their bloody names, but she was very into reading um, vampire books. And then she sort of had a bit of a creative thing where she then started apl applying the death of one of her friend's mothers. Like she didn't think she was dead. She thought she was a vampire. It was all very bizarre. I didn't enjoy it. I wouldn't recommend. N uh, next up though, a non Jane Austen book and one of my favorite books of the year. I'd read this literally two days after I filmed my best books of the year so far. It was People Person by Candice Carty Williams. Got it out from the library. Absolutely love this. Now you'll know I'm a big fan of Queenie, which is um, Candice's first book. Uh, that was one of my favorite books um, of the year, not last year, the year before I think. David's also read it and loved it. And I went into this thinking, oh God, well I love Queenie and I'm gonna love this. This book is so different from Queenie, but I enjoyed it so, so much. This was an amazingly character driven family saga, which opens up with a sort of like thrilling, thriller aspect i don't even want really want to tell you what it is also i went into this not really knowing much about the um about the book at all so it's real sort of like as as it unfurled i loved it um yes yeah, so there's like uh, this amazing sort of like thriller aspect at the beginning where a group of um siblings all come together all at five um five adults who um have all share the same father um but have had different walks of life and things like that and they're all brought together to sort of like get involved in this thriller aspect and i really enjoyed getting to know every single one of the uh, the siblings um you're following mainly dimple um and uh, i loved getting to know her and yeah it was an absolutely fantastic read i would if you're going on holiday this year or you want something to sort of get immersed in at, at the park one day i cannot recommend this high highly enough it was so page turnery and so like I, I think I've I don't think I've read a book that was as character driven as this and still managed to be as page turnery and as gripping and I wanted to know where everything was going I could barely put it down I really really loved it um yeah I would say probably my favorite book of the year so far I really really loved it <laughs> just a shame that I read it literally two days after um I'd filmed my best books of the year so far but yeah absolutely loved it definitely definitely go and read it Back to the Jane Austen stuff, and we read Persuasion. We read Persuasion for my Patreon book club. Um, I think this is a case of maybe if I'd have read this at another time and a place, I would have got a little bit more from it. But by the end of the month, I'd listened to loads of radio plays, watched films, and I was getting a bit confused with the names. <sighs> Jane Austen, I think, had a very small pool of names that she could draw from. In this book alone, there are Janes, Marys, uh, Elizabeths, Anne's. There are three characters named Charles in this and two characters named Mr. Elliot. And to begin with, I really had to use spark notes to actually know what was going on um, because I just I just wasn't sure. Um, I also felt the radio play, listening to the radio play really helped me with this. Um, but I enjoyed the sort of like ridiculous characters. If you love Mrs. Bennet in Pride and Prejudice, I think Pride and Prejudice still remains my favorite Jane Austen. But if you loved Mrs. Bennet from Pride and Prejudice, there's plenty of characters like that in this book. Mr. Elliot being one of them, the senior Mr. Elliot. Um, and then um, some sisters of a visiting family and things like that. There's plenty, um, oh, and um, Anne went was a, Anne Elliot's sister, spoiler, <laughs> Anne Elliot's sister, uh, sisters are ridiculous as well. So plenty of ridiculous bits. Um, and it feels a bit cheeky and I sort of feel like Jane Austen knew what she was doing. This is her, her final book. I also liked um, when, when I was, because we read this for my Patreon book club. So I did a bit of it, um, research into questions and stuff like that. And a lot of uh, places had mentioned it as being her sort of autumnal novel going into the end of her life, etc, etc. And um, there are a lot of references to autumn here and everything like Anne is a lot sort of quieter and measured and more sort of thoughtful than other heroines of hers that I've read. Yeah. I, I ended up giving it 2.5. I didn't love it. Um, but yeah, probably one of the better Jane Austen. Well, it was it was the only Jane Austen book I read this month, but like much better than the retellings and stuff. However, I ended the month of Jane Austen things with reading a book that wasn't on my um, June Austen TBR. And that was um, Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason by uh, Helen Fielding. You'll know that Bridget Jones Diary is one of my favourite books ever. This is the sequel to that. This came out... 
2000, yeah. So I said late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. So somebody had mentioned it to me, either on Instagram or in my video where I'm talking about my TBR for the month, that there's a lot of um, similarities between persuasion and um, edge of reason. And I, I wouldn't have picked them up had I read this and then read Persuasion, but having literally just finished Persuasion and then picked this up straight away, I did see a lot of similarities and I enjoyed the sort of like writing letters aspect, going away on a holiday um, with, with friends and somebody falling ill and that sort of thing. Like. <laughs> I didn't enjoy that aspect, but like I could see a lot of reflections of that here. But this is just so funny. And Bridget Jones's mother, I say this every time I read anything to do with Bridget Jones, is literally, she just slays me. She is one of the best comically written characters I've ever read of all time. Um, as I said, it was really fun to read this having just read Persuasion, as there's many similarities and that just added to me loving the whole thing. Yes, it's aged. Sure, it's aged. In the same, me talking about the Northanger Abbey retelling. And there are some questionable sort of comments and behaviour, but I think it's sort of, this is, this was reflective of the time, which I know is sometimes used as an excuse, like, oh, well, it's very of its time. But I feel like Helen Fielding and Bridget herself have, would have grown so much from this, and that's been reflected in more recent writings or the film, um, that I sort of, I, I let it go. It feels more retro to me rather than dated i think but yeah loved it thought it was really really good there's a whole hilarious section in here which is very sort of meta where um bridget is interviewing colin firth who plays mr darcy in the bbc adaptation that she's obsessed with and the reason it's meta is because if you haven't seen the films colin firth plays mr darcy as in mark darcy um but the whole section of her saying that and i actually found a clip of it on youtube of her interviewing colin firth as bridget and it's hilarious loved it and then i just ended the month on um a book that i picked up from an independent bookshop that i started reading on um, independent bookshop crazy reading night uh, and that's my mess is a bit of a life by georgia pritchett so i heard georgia pritchett being interviewed on the adam buxton podcast which made me aware of this book and i wanted to pick it up um i was going to listen to it on audio and then i saw it in the bookshop and i thought oh no i must get that um georgia pritchett this is a, a memoir of her life as a child sort of growing up falling in love um talking about her anxieties and um never explicitly said but like maybe her sort of like neurodivergence I think but based on what I've read here um and then falling in love and having children and working as a writer for a series of very successful tv shows and people um I enjoyed it's, it's written in this very sort of like I said short vignettes and then the, like, the first two pages I look at were long bits but like lots and lots of sort of like very short paragraphs and passages about her her life sometimes actually towards the end a lot more um, illustrations not that much towards the beginning um and yeah I, I i got some enjoyment out of it i gave it three stars but the whole i couldn't escape this sort of feeling when i was reading it of like it felt a bit like i was being told sort of very personal and um very intimate stories by someone who was like in front of me, who I'd never met before, and I was sort of like, felt a bit awkward and didn't really know where to look. It was almost like, <laughs> I can't really say, like, say like you've got like a colleague who you don't see very often, and then when they see you, they sort of tell you this barrage of like really personal and intimate stories about people you don't know and um, situations of like that you, about their children and about their children's sort of habits and things like that. And I felt a lot of the time like, didn't really know where to look <laughs> like I just got that sort of vibe from it but yeah I mean impressive writing to be able to do that and there's no doubt that she is a comical person and like I've I've watched Succession she writes on Succession and Succession's a great story so that a, a great series so there we go the seven books that I read in the month of June um let me know what you read in the month of June did you read um any J uh, Jane Austen books I know that Jane Austen July is just coming up um so I know a lot of people will be going into uh reading uh, a lot of Jane Austen stuff um do give the Bridget Jones books a, a read if you're going into Jane Austen July and you're looking for retellings Bridget Jones's diary is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice and The Edge of Reason has got aspects of persuasion in it as well. Also, I feel like there was a little bit in there to do with Emma as well. So please do give those a go. But um, yeah, let me know how you're all getting on and I'll see you all again soon. I'll see you tomorrow actually for mid-July TBR. See you then. Bye!